The last number of uh, videos I showed you how I build a router table as an extension of my table saw. In this video I'm going to show you how I build the router lift. So let's crawl under the table and I'll show you how it works and how I built it. The only thing visible from the tabletop is the handle. So we have to go under the table and there we see the router lift which uh, moves my Festool OF1400 router up and down. It's uh, a little bit crowded here under the table and lightning isn't too good so I'm going to take the whole table out, flip it around, put it on my workbench and show you how I build it and how it exactly works. The router lift is made of a post with a movable push block on drawer glides and a wooden frame which has a threaded drop which moves a second push block and the two parts are linked with a bicycle brake cable. A bicycle brake cable is actually a Bowden cable which is made of an outer shelving and an inner cable which can be moved inside the outer shelving. When you pull the handle on your brake the cable is pulled in and because the brakes are spring-loaded if you release the handle it's going back. If I turn the handle this moves this block into this direction and this pulls the cable and this movement in the cable is transmitted to the push block which moves the router down. For the other direction there are springs in the router posts and the router itself is also pulled down by gravity because it's four and a half kilos. The central piece of the router lift is the post. So I start the project with mounting two drawer glides exactly parallel to this post. The holes in this drawer glides are too small for normal wood screws. So I had to take them to the drill press and drill bigger holes. I clamp a second piece of wood to the post, this helps to align the drawer glide. Then I carefully mark the holes, drill pilot holes and finally screw the drawer glides to the post. Once both drawer glides are in place, I check with a caliper whether they are really parallel. This is important because if they are not parallel, the push block won't move freely. So obviously the next thing to build is the push block. The push block gets a hole with the Forstner bit. That's the place where the router lift makes contact with the router. And I also need to notch off the corner of the push block to adapt it to the shape of the router. Now I have to find the right position of the push block on the drawer glides. Since the drawer glides do not have holes at the position of the push block, I have to drill them myself. Now it's again time to carefully align everything Mark and drill the pilot holes and screw the push block to the drawer glides. The 
pull lever gets screwed to the push block. It's just a square piece of wood with a hole for the cable. And we need a fixed block screwed to the post which holds back the outer casing of the brake cable. To fix the cable to the pull lever I use a piece of threaded rod and two nuts and I'm going to drill a hole through the threaded rod. For the second push block I'm also using drawer glides and I mount them to a wooden frame. And then I have a threaded rod which makes the push block moving forward and backwards. Building the wooden frame is straightforward, but it's important to be precise and make sure everything gets really parallel. I had to do the whole thing two times because I had too many misalignments in my first attempt, making the whole mechanism unusable. And finally, my router table is fully built. I use it to cut moldings, round over handles and a lot of other things. My router table is fully built now. I have some more videos which do explain how to build the router table itself, the mounting system for the router and the router fence. If you haven't done so, check them out. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.